Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Testing one, two, six, four. I never learned how to count very well. Okay, basically, I'm making this video for Jeff. <coughs> not that's not his last name. Is not. <coughs> Actually, his last name is. I'm not gonna say, because he doesn't want people to know. But he goes by. I think he goes by. Yeah, Jeff Brent. I get. I, I hate. Nothing against you, Jeff. But people that have two first names, like, Hi, I'm Mike Danny, Michael Danny, or Danny Michael. No, you're, you got to have a friggin' last name, like a real last name. And he does have a real last name, but uh, now we're getting off track, aren't we? So this video, uh, I'm making for Jeff Brent. The bass player and I think founder of Roads to Oz, which is a tribute to Randy Rhodes. I say to me, it's just Randy Rhodes. I don't care about Ozzy. Not that I really don't care about him, but I I don't. <laughs> Believe me, I wish somebody else would have found Randy Rhodes and uh, he would have been here still. But who? You know, because you think about it. All right, who was looking for? Who could Randy Rhodes have gone into? Because he was going to leave Quiet Riot and start another band. And he could have jumped into any band. He wouldn't have jumped into Motley Crue because he was looking for something else. Only Mick could have done what Motley Crue did. He couldn't have jumped into a band like Rat because that wasn't his thing. Rat didn't even know what they were doing and they weren't even around in 70. So in 79 there was Van Halen just got signed so everybody was still like wow because 79 78 Van Halen took off on their world tour their first world tour opening for Sabbath they go out and their first show they blow Sabbath off the stage and that's the end of it that's the beginning of them be starting to become headliners they finished their first world tour Van Halen as headliners because no one would take them kind of like what Kiss tries to claim but you know different reasons they're actually very talented I mean, Alex Van Halen is an incredible drummer. Eddie Van Halen was amazing, and and is, and I hope he gets better. And David Lee Roth at the time was the ultimate front man. Front man, the end. Seventy-eight, seventy-nine. Paul Stanley was, he was okay. He fit Kiss for the front man, but he didn't even want to be the front man. He had to be trained. I mean, this guy had all kinds of hang-ups. Because I always wondered why he kept hitting his hair and always pushing this side forward. Now, I know he's covering up his monster ear or whatever he called it. So, or his non-ear. So, David Lee Roth. So, after Van Halen hit, and by 79, it like, okay, these guys are the next thing, everybody starts to become Van Halen clones. And that's what Hollywood was filled with. Van Halen clones in 78, 79. Which always happens. So once that was still happening when Motley Crue hit. But Motley Crue was a dirtier, more simple uh, street. They're no way punk. And they're not really glam. But they're kind of both. They're like a New York Dolls that uh, wrote better music because New York Dolls really, I think. And that's where Nicky got his haircut from, was a guitar player from New York Dolls. 
everybody thinks it's Susie and the Banshees. It's not. Or it's the, that's where that idiot from The Cure got his haircut to Susie because he was in the band, right? Am I correct? Yes. I don't know, know a lot about that stupid band, The Cure. But apparently I got schooled in them yesterday by some idiot. Not an idiot. He's a nice guy. And he wants me to listen to the album Disintegration by The Cure. And I have to listen to the whole thing. And I made him, he has to listen to Diary of a Madman and my band. Which I think isn't a bad trade-off, really. He gets the better music. I don't know, I haven't listened to it yet. I'll do it, though, before I go back. Works at this train place I go to to buy my model trains. So, Jeff Brent, Roads to Oz. They have a gig coming up. Uh, they got a new guitar player. So I guess Randy Chambers... I, burp. I, I, I guess that's what it is. So, the new guy, I hear, is pretty good. And uh, they just need gear because they got a show... They basically got a show handed to them. It's an Aussie tribute show with a bunch of Aussie cover bands. See, the first Randy Rhodes tribute band was mine, Blizzard. And I formed it in 1991 because I wanted to be ready for 92, 10 years. And I did. I, did, I was going to play guitar, which would have been disastrous, of course. But uh, I found a guitar a guy that was way better than me. Pulled this guitar out since uh, I think I when I bought it, and when I bought it, it had two EMGs. Ripped them out, put in uh, Seymour Duncan's. This is a Duncan distortion, as far as I can tell, and this is something else. Duncan design, so it's just a typical, you know. But you know, I wanted to keep Duncan's in there. Um. So I, this is, um, you know, the beginning of Fender destroying what uh, Jackson had done and Randy. So they started putting their stupid five-way switches in. Fury, oh my gosh. So not only are you putting in EMGs, which makes everything sound like a buzzsaw, takes all the warmth out of everything, you put in this friggin' five-way switch, why? Do you, have you not ever heard anybody... Every metal, hard rock guitarist in the world uses a toggle switch at some point. And if they don't, they're an idiot. Think of them. Randy, big time. A lot more than people realize. Eddie Van Halen. Not as much, but he made it famous because of uh, You Really Got Me. When he's playing that uh, dinosaur... Uh, Ivan is a destroyer. Ace Freely. Lots of people. Me. I love the toggle switch. So, when I got it, I said, I want the EMGs ripped out, which I still have in bags. I have all the EMG things ripped out. I put them in baggies to sell. So, if anybody wants EMGs, the ones that come with, you know, the standard ones, like, uh, you know, what's his name? Zach always has in his, the blah, 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 and the blah, blah, blah. Everybody gets the same ones. It's almost like getting a distortion in a 59 or a PAF. Super distortion PAF is the ultimate combination, just so you know. 
So I had that ripped out. It had two volumes in a tone, which is stupid ass. So I had a uh, two volumes and this. Right? Right. So that way you can turn down one and you have to you can go pop 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 pop. So I have a volume, a tone, and a toggle as basically a kill switch. This isn't hooked up. I knew there was something there. It's been too long. And I don't know why, but I just got a bunch of... I, I ordered one D-Tuna, and I got two. So I had them throw it on this, which is stupid, because now that changes this from a floating to a non-floating, which is not good. Because this bar is really down far, as you can see. But you can get the job done. For what he needs, which will be two songs, I think uh, will be cool. Uh, I don't know what it's tuned to, but he can tune it for himself, right? Because I'm loaning a guitar to him. So turns out that I got not only this but my black so I've got the the Jackson you know uh, what would you call it the uh, what do you call it where it's the golden the gate the grail so I have my Concord which is a real Jackson Concord and I have a black Jackson my black and uh, gold brass whatever you want to call it I got them both here. I can't loan them either of those though. And even if I had, I got my, um, I think I had RR5 or RR4, whatever. Both the same thing. Um, those, I uh, have no, this. And he needs a bar. Because he's going to need it for uh, Over the Mountain and something else. Flying High again or something. But whatever. He says he might not do uh, Suicide Solution. I'm like, really? Because you got to do that song. If you're playing Ozzy and Randy, you got to play Suicide Solution. That's what I think.
Yeah, that'll work. So it works. Uh, it's got this on the back. It's pretty no frills except this. If he wants to go down really low, which he doesn't have to on any Ozzy song, this will do it. <laughs> Useless uh, 
detuna. But it works, and it's worth a lot of money. Even this strap's worth a lot of money. It was custom made for the guitar. Because I'm like, wow, he didn't play this. He never got a chance to play a white Rhodes. He just had his Concord. And the Concord has its own strap, which I already have. So this one, I just, this is the strap for this. Doesn't have locks, but he's only using it for two songs. Gosh, I don't know if I should give it to him. Not give it, but see, okay, this is worth a lot because it's been customized, but it's not worth that much, I guess, because it has been customized. Here's the other thing. See that truss rod cover? That's a Concord truss rod cover. Like a Concord. Those truss rod covers are, they only made a, a couple hundred at, at most. And when I <laughs> went and I got my Concord, the Relic, so I could build it, um, I put it on and was screwing it in and I broke it. I'm like, ah! Because it's made out of rosewood. They just made his this Concord thing out of, you know, stuff they're making the uh, fretboard out of. Rosewood, mother of pearl. Rosewood, mother of pearl. So, I freaked out. I went back down. They gave me two. So, this one is the one that is slightly broken. You can see on the bottom screw you see that so it, it broke and I have the piece somewhere I just haven't glued it back on I figured I'd throw it on here but even that alone is worth a couple hundred bucks so I just he wanted a guitar that was only worth a couple hundred bucks I go I don't have any Jacksons that are worth a couple hundred bucks why buy them right so I think <laughs> Okay, so, yeah. did you hear that? You break it, you buy it. So, this is worth not only a couple hundred bucks. This is worth like at least 1200 I would say. Uh, I don't remember what this is. Of course, there's no... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, let's just say it's expensive. It's not something I can just throw around. But I will let you borrow it. And we've already discussed our terms, right? 
Um, I'm going to try to go with you to the show if I can. But if you stay too long, I really don't want to go, and I don't want to really. But okay, so he's draw. Uh, the show is on December eighth. Uh, I think it's in Garden Grove, and it's a tribute to Ozzy and Blizzard or Roads to Oz is playing around five five thirty, I think. Go to Roads to Oz Facebook page. You'll find out the information there, and you'll probably see this guitar when they play beautiful isn't it it's damn beautiful it's just a work of art it looks more like so I was trying to describe the Concord the plane it looks it looked to Randy exactly like this the nose faces down before their go super supersonic so they can see what the hell they're doing and that's what he saw and that's what he drew Grover did not come up with this headstock design he had to say that in order to trademark it because that's how you trademark guitars headstocks that's what came out of the Gibson uh, Ibanez lawsuit headstocks so this is the the trademark for Jackson whether it's this way or that way that's it so there's people that come close but if you just diddle with it a little diddle a little you can uh, use it. So there you go. You can use this, jet, I guess. Uh, just really take care of it, dude. Big time. Or you will, you know. And Jeff's going to go with me when I do the uh, Rainy Roads Tour of Burbank, so you keep you still want me to do that you tell me okay if not well too bad i'm doing it anyways and he's doing it with me so that's not gonna happen until next year all right so jeff you get back to me about this and i'll talk to you later subscribe comment like do something don't just sit there all right later